right, let's get right to it. It's 910, Big 550, KTRS. Welcome in the TV audience on 11.2. He is one of the biggest movie stars going. He's done Bull Durham. He's done Field of Dreams. He won Academy Awards for Dances with Wolves. He's also done smaller great movies like Fandango, my personal favorite of the many, as well as American Flyers. This next movie he felt so passionately about, he decided to invest his own money in. The story, the movie is called Black or White. Kevin Costner, welcome to KTRS here in St. Louis. Thanks, McGraw. Um, this movie, it, well, first of all, movie stars don't go to places like St. Louis and go through a car wash and promote movies like this. Why <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why is this so special? Well, I, I have done this before. You know, Dancers with the Wool was not a movie that people were going to make. Um, Field of Dreams was a real hard one for Hollywood to understand. You know, Bull Durham, you know, we made for $6 million. You know, those movies have all begun, become classics. And, and in the case of Dancers with the Wolves, I had to put my, my own money in it. I read this movie, Black or White, and, um, and I... I was surprised that people didn't feel the way I did, but people are feeling that way now that they've seen it. But I had a feeling that could happen, and, and if I was going to make it, I was going to have to look to myself, look to my friend, and, uh, and, and put the money up. So this is not new for me. I'm open range, an American Western, you know, they're not exactly in vogue. Uh, I took it around the country. So if you, if you make something, if you believe in it, you know, it's not refrigerator art. You know, your mom puts right. your crummy picture on the thing. If, if you actually make something, if you think it's kind of good, you go. So I, I, I don't mind taking my movies out uh, uh, out to the cities of America. It's a story about, uh, it's, it's, it's very involved, but the quick synopsis is a grandfather uh, and a struggle to keep his um, interracial granddaughter. And in 2014 and 2015, in St. Louis... Um, I applaud you for St. Louisans, for you coming to St. Louis and not uh, thinking the national conversation is what the national conversation was about the last six months. St. Louis was what was in that premiere last night. It was black, it was white, it was interracial, all working together, all trying to find a solution as opposed to the problem. Yeah, our problem didn't start in August. You know, we, this, has been a, this has been a thing that the country has been dealing with. Uh, we understand it, but we understand it so well that we should know that we're not near solving it. We are trying to move forward. This movie wasn't made to capitalize on that moment. It was made long before that. It, it doesn't even uh, attempt to solve it. What it is, it's about the welfare of a child uh, by, by, by two families that, are, that, that want the best for the child. And, are, and when uh, custody becomes an issue, race becomes an issue too and it really had no place but that's what we do as human beings sometimes we we don't let our differences just be our differences we bring race into it you know and uh, in this movie it somehow deals with it and it, it's kind of a miracle when i read it it's very politically incorrect but at the end of the day it's it's a very warm movie almost humorous at I, points I, I can't find myself now i knew i was interviewing you i saw it last night so i might be a little skewed here but i, I still, still keep thinking about it so it's a movie that stays with you um for a couple of days to, to think about it and it's it's a story in a movie about race but it's also a story in a movie that has nothing to do about race, in a sense. Absolutely. It stayed with me, and that's, that's, I have to decide what I'm going to do with my life. I mean, my life isn't just movies, but if it's going to be a movie, it's got to be something. And, I've, and sometimes movies are just popcorn. It, that's just what it is. And I, I have made those movies. I've made the love story. I've made the romantic comedy. I've made westerns, the political thrillers. But sometimes you get to make a movie that you think, Wait a second. This changed me a little bit. This is a movie that maybe moves the dial. It moved the dial for me, and I don't think I'm so far removed from people being Hollywood, if you will, that I don't that, that, that I don't have a heartbeat. That I don't have an idea that, wow, this changed me. Why would it not affect somebody else? I mean, I do the same thing all the time. If I read a book, if I re hear a good piece of music, my first instinct is to share it. So when I read Black or White, I thought. You know, not that this solves anything, but this is a very interesting place to, to, to dr jump off and have a conversation. What magic happened while filming the movie? Well, the movie starts strong, and it, and it runs its course. It's, it's, it's very even-handed, but it, it, it's, uh, it's driving itself to a courtroom scene that, um, that I don't think people are prepared to, uh, 
to know what really takes place in that courtroom because a lot of things get said and maybe a lot of things people have been trying to say for a long time. In fact, Octavia Spencer, I know, did the movie because she gets to speak not only for herself to actually say things that she's been wanting to say for a long time, I think, personally, and find and found a way to say it through her character. And I think Anthony Mackie had the same opportunity to really define what his own thinking is, both in the movie and what he was personally thinking and has felt for a long time. So everybody lets it hang out there. I think you carry the movie clearly. The little girl steals the show. The judge steals a couple of scenes. And the other lawyer, the uh, Anthony Mackie, he steals a couple of scenes. Yeah. Well, a good movie is designed for uh, every actor to shine. If, if it's all about the lead and the lead starts to get paranoid, hmm, somebody's too good in here, let's kind of start to cut that back. You know, Duvon is a terrific character. And for that matter, Bill Burr, a world-class comedian, came in and played my, my lawyer. I, you know, people, they saw this movie, and uh, it spoke to them out loud. And, uh, you know, the movie's pretty humorous. Uh, really, it's warm. It is. It is. There, there's a lot of t uh, tough scenes, and then there's a lot of great, uh, a great comedic timing at the right time to sort of release the pressure. Yeah. Um, Mike Binder, what's the deal with you and him? This is the second movie you've done with him. Yeah, it is. Well, you know, he's he's really had a, a uh, an interesting arc as an artist. You know, he's a stand-up comedian. That's not an easy job, and it became a world-class one. But his heart was in writing and and surprisingly being a comedian his all his movies don't just go right at the straight comedy he really goes deep with his drama but he never forgets that that nothing suffers from a sense of humor and it's and f has always found a way to lace that so yeah we made upside of anger he wanted to work with me again I, I i had the idea that we might work together he sent me four or five screenplays and i said no to all of them which really kind of threatened our friendship because <laughs> he's like you know because he's like well what is it and i just said look it's just not for me not that it wasn't good but it just was a near miss. And, you know, where was he going to keep sending me one? You know, most people probably at that point would say, no, I'm never sending that guy another thing. But he sent me black or white because he understood that when I see something, I'll do it. And, and uh, I thought it really had so much potential. I thought it had a chance if we pulled it off to be classic. But um, in the end, it kind of came down to me and my partner uh, that we had to pay for it. Um, because no one was going to make it. And just because someone doesn't see the value in something doesn't mean that I don't feel it. You know, it's like, you know, it's hard to fall out of love. I mean, if I fall in love with something, that's the way it stays. Um, it's a, it, it was a great movie. It, it reached another level last night when I found out it was a true story or based on a true story. Yeah, it was based on Mike's life. Uh, Mike's uh, wife's sister died of AIDS uh, prematurely, died a young woman, 31, and, uh, and had a biracial little baby who um, uh, then they decided to raise, Mike and, and Diane, but that also had a family down in South Central. Who uh, And so the difference in the movie was there was no acrimony there. Those two families got along beautifully and raised this boy who's now 34 years old. Uh, and really supported this child. And so this child lived in two worlds, very, very different worlds, South Central Brentwood. Um, Mike thought it was a, the, the, the truest character in it was the Reggie character. Um, and uh, Mike just thought it was a great way to, and only, and only the way a writer can. I saw a window into this conversation that we're having such difficulty having, that we're dancing around, that people just don't know how to really quite get into it. And I think Mike did a miracle. I, I, I really do. And I, I was determined to bring this to the screen. It, was, it would have been very easy for you, Kevin Costner, to say, boy, with everything going on in Ferguson, let's just avoid St. Louis. I don't want to touch the third rail. This movie and Ferguson and St. Louis at this point, let's go somewhere else. Did you ever think about canceling this? this Ferguson trip? is America. Okay, uh, you know, there's the, 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 you know, and St. Louis is America, and, and so are the rest of the, you know, cities around that I'm going to go to. I, I'm not afraid of the, of the truth. I'm not afraid of my story. I'm not, I don't feel the need to be politically correct. I don't need to be jarring in life and, 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 and be cute about being, you know, uh, you know, not politically correct. It's not, you know, you don't go around and just, just offend anybody you can. But when we get at issues that really matter, we might as well confront them head on. So coming to St. Louis, I didn't feel any fear uh, saying the words that come out in this movie. I had no fear. In fact, I had more fear if we dodged those words, if we somehow softened it. It doesn't do anybody any good.
The movie is called Black or White. It is based on a true story. Kevin Costner, is it up for the Oscars this year? Does it count for the Oscars coming up? It qualified this year, but it hasn't been seen at the front part of the year. So, so probably we're 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 pushing the rock uphill. So, uh, it w- it qualified in December for a week. Uh, it'll come out the thirtieth of January. Uh, you know, um, if enough people see it, have seen it, that vote. Um, it, it might very well be considered, but I don't know if that many people, uh, by the time this comes out, where the a- Oscars and all that stuff, if if we really have a legitimate chance or not. It's, you know, that's a nice thing to go dress up. I love seeing my wife get pretty. Uh, I'm, I'm, my ego is such that, yes, would I like to win another award in my life, be nominated? Yes, I would. But um, I, I've always known that the value of the movie is not necessarily tied to awards. I also know that it's not tied to its opening week in box office. The value of a movie will always be that movie that you're willing to share five years from now, ten years from now, as well as the opening week. And if you see it, you tell a friend about it. I mean, I felt that way when I heard Whitney sing that little song, I Will Always Love You. I think a lot of people said, you got to hear this song. And I think sometimes there's movies where you say, I think you got to see this. Now, I don't, is black or white that? I don't know how it will translate. It is for me, and I had to make it. And I um, uh, just listening to you talk a little bit made me feel good about why I made it. Uh, where are your two Oscars? Um, are they doorstops or are they on a show? They're not somewhere? out in front. They, I used to have them down in my screening room. Uh, that seemed like an appropriate place where I'm watching. But no, I don't. I don't display them. Um, you know, the planets lined up, and I won. I don't know how that happens. Are they but in a box somewhere? I think, yeah, they're, they're in a safe. <laughs> they're in a safe. My, every, everybody wants to hold it, and, and, of course, I let people do that. Sure. Um, You're Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure what we were talking about there. <laughs> oh, now I'm starting to get what this show is all about. <laughs> the movie is called Black or White. It opens January 30th, and uh, it is a based on a true story. It's one of those movies where you walk out, and you're like, that couldn't happen, and then you realize it's a true story. Story, and you think, wow, that's we have hope in this world. Well, I, I, I do think it's a, an authentic look at where we're at in race today. I mean, I think we, you know, Hollywood, we're making movies sometimes that are looking at the past, be it The Butler, be it Selma, be it 12 Years a Slave, very appropriate movies. But they're looking backwards uh, at what, how things were. And I think this is a very strong look at where we're at today. Kevin Costner, you are always welcome to come here and plug anything you're doing. We're big, big, big fans. Well, how about a shout out to my friend Amy Weinstein, who said to give you a hard time, which seems to be impossible. Well, I, I for years, I, I thought she was lying. I didn't think she knew Kevin Costner. She keeps saying she knew you. Well, it turns out Allison she does. Allison Conant was, it was her good friend and was the first person I ever hired in Hollywood. And I remember thinking, how do you give an interview? And I remember looking at her. She showed up, a little girl from St. Louis, and I, I wasn't sure how to conduct an interview. And I said, well, you you got to be on time, right? She said, yeah. And, and I thought, okay, well, that sounds good. I said, there's going to be some unusual people calling this office. Trust me. You know, like, and I said, don't be surprised. It, you know, maybe even the president calls here or something. She goes, okay. And I thought, and so you'll be on time. She said, yeah. That's the second time I said, okay, good. I think, well, then why don't we do this? All right. There and you that go. was my interview, and then that was my she introduced me to Amy. So my connection to St. Louis have been two people that have been really good in my life. Kevin Costner, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, McGraw. 923 here, back in a moment, Big 550 K.